protesting. So let's prove them wrong. Let's show them. Let's show them. Let's show them that our unity and power will bring us together. Let's chant so loud that they'll be able to hear us across the city all the way to Minneapolis. This protest is meant to be peaceful and is meant to show our pain and that we've had enough. Black lives matter. Our voices deserve to be heard and today they will be. With that being said, the first thing I would like us to do is to offer a moment of silence to honor George Floyd and every black individual who has been a victim to injustice. Even though the cars will keep honking, please do not be distracted by them. This moment is for George and for all of the victims who have fallen to this injustice. Let us join in this minute of silence.
Now, I'd like to introduce Amaya Martin. Amaya? Exactly, come on, y'all. Thank you. Amaya is an 18-year-old first-generation college student. She advocates for black lives and believes that people of color are beautiful and valued, and amen. She intends to continue protesting until justice is sought out for her black brothers and sisters. Please give a warm welcome to Amaya Martin. today because we're tired. Dog fucking tired. Yes. <laughs> Every time I wake up in the morning, I think, how many more? When will our lives be valued? For too far, for too long, my people have been gaslit to believe that oppression and systematic racism is a fallacy from four score and seven years ago. And that's a fucking illusion. That's an illusion. In reality, in reality, my ancestors fought tooth and nail against our oppressors merely decades ago. Decades. Come on, baby. George Floyd, say his name. George Floyd. We want justice. Sandra Bland, Tamir Rice, Alton Sterling, Michael Brown, Arlen Eric Garner, they need justice. Repeat after me, repeat after me, repeat after me. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Black power. Black power. Black power. And that's your business. Thank you. I've known Amaya for a while and she's always used her voice for good and it's wonderful to have her up here. Now I'd like to introduce Jay. They are a 17 year old Chinese American student who is passionate about the Black Lives Matter movement along with the Me Too movement. Jay stands with the LGBTQ community, believes that no human is illegal and that change needs to happen to protect the planet. Please give a warm welcome to Jay. The system that put in that put in place that's supposed to protect us has failed us. No, this isn't the false time. Over and over, we see that innocent people who are trying to live their lives being shot at, falsely accused, being treated inhumanely, and murdered. This has to come to an end. People of color shouldn't be shot down or taken down like it's some carnival game trying to win the biggest prize. And yet this system allows police to get away with it countless amount of times. It was designed to protect white supremacist interests. The officer who knelt on George Floyd has had a pass with at least 17 complaints, which is higher than the average. How can somebody look at this and say that change isn't needed? That the police that are meant to protect us aren't? Protesters are getting hurt because they're speaking out about what they believe in. They were met with forces such as tear gas, rubber bullets, and batons by police. So who do we call? for help when they're the ones attacking. Just because you do not see the discrimination daily does not mean it isn't happening. We were taught to be hateful, not born with it. It's the same hate that led to George Floyd pleading for his life like countless of other people. And this is why we're here. This is our time to stand together because our voices will be heard and we will not be silenced. Because silence speaks volumes and shows compliancy. We can't bring back those that have already been killed, but there was change happening. We are getting the attention of those with power. Police officers have started to put down their weapons and march with us. Speak, seeing the effect of a long and unjust system will cause change, but still making sure people vote in the primaries today is crucial for change. 
to put people that are fed up with this cycle to, to represent the people. People who understand and see that every day struggles are minorities. Because people are holding and we have power in our numbers. Now I'm not black, but I see you. I'm not black, but I hear you. I'm not black, but I will stand with you. Jay mentioned a really, really important thing. If we want to see change, we have to vote. Yes! So please, if you have the opportunity to vote, please use it. Now I would like to introduce Eli Honda Garcia. He is a 16 year old who stands for all the people of all ages and is a part of the Rainbow Rose LGBTQ Center of York as the academic chair. Please welcome Eli Holland Garcia. Hi everyone, I'm Eli Holland Garcia. And I wanted to speak to you today to say that I am devastated and angry just like you. I want to acknowledge my privilege and how harmful that has become to people. So I'm going to keep this message simple and clear. I hear your voice! I hear your pain! I feel it too! And I want you to know that I am with you! What is happening in our country is terrifying and dangerous, and it should not be. Yes. It is time for us all to stand up for what is right. People of privilege, people like me, people that stand with you in this crowd, are going to have to get a little more than just uncomfortable. Yeah. Wrong behavior will not be excused. Acts of violence cannot be excused. Racism cannot be excused. And death cannot be excused of any person. Change starts here, where all of you stand. You stand together and as one. So create the change. Be the change, and change will be here. Right here in our hometown of York City! Thank you all for having me here, and I'm so glad I can bring some hope with where I stand. Thank you, Eli, for giving us the perspective of an ally because we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the rest of the allies here as well. Because black people, we can't get out of this oppression on our own. We, we're, we've been fighting for too damn long. So we need you. We need your voices. We'd like to bring Mayor Helfrich and Commissioner Robinson to, to the stage to say a few words on behalf of our city and police department because they are standing with us today. Thank you, everyone. I'm not sure, did the commissioner make it down yet? Okay, the, commission, the commissioner is busy uh, making sure that we are all safe right now. So uh, all day yesterday, he and his officers stood with us. So they are, they are here and kneeled with us. I wanted to say that I, I'm very grateful to be invited to, uh, to be here with all these amazing young organizers and young speakers. I am honored to listen and learn from them, but I also want to take a few minutes to, to see if I can be a teacher and let you know some things about our past and my past. But let me start. We are still 
concerned with COVID-19. So please, everybody, if you do not have a mask, we have free masks over here. This has been a struggle between the, the righteous fight for protesting for human rights and our concerns over our fellow citizens catching COVID-19. So let's do our best to be careful. Thank you, thank you very much. And, and the folks from Family First Health are over here with water, if anybody needs anything, if anybody gets hot, and masks and things over there. Um, the second thing, yeah. that's for Family First Health. And thank, oh, the time for the commissioner, all right. talk a little bit about, and I do, I'm not trying to talk about myself, I'm talking about history through my experiences. So when I was 19 years old, I was in Washington, D.C., and I was protesting the first Iraq war, protesting the sending of young brown and black men to go fight somebody else's war. As a result of that, myself and my friends got trampled by the U.S. Park Service police in Lafayette Park across from the White House. I then later protested, some of you may have heard of the Seattle protests in 1998 against the World Trade Organization. We were protesting in 99 in Washington, D.C., protesting there. Then at the Republican convention in 2000, we were protesting the death penalty, something that takes disproportionately from us our African-American and Latino brothers. At that protest, at that protest, four police officers infiltrated our protesters, tried to get us to do violent acts, and when they couldn't do that, had 435 of my brothers and sisters arrested, saying that we were trying to build weapons of destruction while we were building 12-foot-high puppets to bring down to the square on Broad Street to protest and block the streets to try and help save our brothers and sisters. I bring these things all up because none of those protests were a success for me. I did not get out of it what I wanted. I didn't stop the Iraq war. I didn't stop the World Trade Organization and I didn't stop the death penalty. But today I have hope. Today I have a lot of hope, which is why I'm up here. Why I've thrown all caution to the wind and I'm with you 100%. I have never seen anything in my life more disgusting than the video of the public murder of George Floyd. Yeah. But George Floyd has given us a gift. And we hope that, we've hoped in the past at Ferguson that it was a gift. We've hoped that the other things were a gift. I believe this one is the true gift. Some of you historians may remember 65 years ago, a young 14 year old black man was murdered and tortured. His name was Emmett Till. Black boy, Emmett Till murdered. His mom chose to have an open casket funeral so that everybody had to look. Everybody had to look and see the results of the racism. George Floyd has given us our open casket. George Floyd has given us our open casket. That video is there for everyone to see. Everybody should be forced to see it. Protesting is not enough. Protesting plus timing is everything. Let us keep our peaceful power together. Let us build our tent. Let us find our allies. And let us use this timing to change the world. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I think we all know why we're here. And I will be among many voices to say this. Black Lives Matter. I will also be among many voices to say this. This is not a black people problem. This is a human being problem. 
And if you have any sense of humanity, you will use your voice and lift it up to the sky and stand for something. I'd like to thank everyone who came out today to voice their constitutional right to protest in a peaceful manner on something so important. Not just important to black people, but important to all people. Not just people here in York City, not just people here in York County, not just people here in Pennsylvania, but everywhere. It is a problem that, is, that has existed since the beginning of our country. And it's time for it to stop. But it's going to take all of us to lift our voice and be heard because we know that it needs to end. What I witnessed as a law enforcement executive happened to George Floyd is a crime. I have a voice. I sit at the table and I won't be quiet. And I won't be quiet because I know what a crime looks like. This wasn't a training issue. This wasn't a poly policy issue. This was a human being issue that really it was about wallowing in ignorance and arrogance. I can't stand by as a police executive, not just a voice in York City, but wherever my voice can be heard, I will not stand by and let people play games about what we saw on that video. What we saw was a crime. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And we have to call it that. We have to proclaim it as that. And we have to hold the criminal justice process and system accountable to bring all to justice. I in no way think that I am the remedy of all ills, as I am one person. But if we all stand, and we all stand together, and our many voices become one voice, we can make things happen. I am in a position that gives me the position to make policy, to implement procedures that are best practices. But again, this wasn't about procedure. This wasn't about practice. Every police officer in this country knows when they can use deadly force. They also know when they must stop. And if you do not stop, when you are no longer allowed to use deadly force by law, it becomes a crime. What I want all of you to know is, while we lift our voice here, we have work to do. There still must be labor. We still have to put ourselves, these voices, not the voices of the oppressor, but these voices in positions to make a difference. It's not enough to stop here. We can't stop here. We must continue. We must strive for excellence so that we are able to put ourselves in positions of power where we can make a difference. Because everyone out here should know, but if they don't know, let me tell you, oppression is about power. 
and there is power in the voice of people if you do more than just lift your voices and act and put yourself in a position to make a difference. Not just here in New York City, but throughout the United States and throughout this world. So as sure as you stand here today and you lift your voice for the purpose of protesting in a peaceful way because of the repulsive acts that happened to our brother George Floyd, you must too, when you leave here, think about what it is as an individual that you can do to put yourself in a position to make a difference. Don't let it stop here. I encourage you to continue to lift your voice. I encourage you to continue to peacefully protest. And the last thing that I say, Black Lives Matter. Thank you so much, Commissioner. And I just want to remind everyone that we are so lucky to have a police department that stands with us. We are so, so lucky. So a way that we can be thankful and show them our gratitude is by keeping this environment as peaceful as possible. Please, we have children here. All right now. For our next speaker, I would like to welcome Shaqueen Earth. She is a 16-year-old and an active participant in the Black Lives Matter movement and stands for equality, liberty, and justice for all regardless of race, gender, and sexual orientation. So please give her a really warm welcome. This is my first time publicly speaking, but I felt like I should because this means a lot to me, so I'd like to read you all something I wrote. All right. I am a strong young black woman. Yes. But I'm scared every time my brother or my father walks out the door that they will not make it home alive. I'm scared for my black men and women with everything going on right now. This should show us that there will never be peace on stolen land or on the land that my people built from the ground up. We're killed every day and even on camera like a public execution by the racist people of this country just because they're intimidated by strong black people. This has been going on since the beginning of American history. This stops now. We need to attack the root problem in order for us to offset the repetition of the events that have occurred. It's time for us to fight back. We need to take the proper steps to reformulate these laws because the laws that are in place do not consider the well-being of black people. These laws in this government was set up by the same people decades ago that claimed black people were only three-fifths of human beings. But we are so much more. We are human beings and we deserve better. This system needs to be torn down and built back up in order for us to actually have liberty and justice for all. Officers need to be retrained and the ones who don't comply should not be certified. But let's not forget, let's not forget it's not just police officers, it's racist people as a whole. But we have the power and right to take the steps needed to change this system because our taxes put money in those officers' wallets. I wonder when I get older, will I be paying the officer that will take my brother or father's life? Who's next? 
There should be no next. There should be no other life taken without someone held accountable. And everyone who thinks we should stop fighting, we won't. We will continue to fight until this ends. My voice will be heard. Do you believe that she's just 16 years old? Right. All right, now, where's the youth? Where are my young? Where are my kids? Come on, y'all. Where's the youth? This is about you guys. I want to welcome Mr. Craighead. He works with the youth, and now I would just like to introduce him, Richard Craighead. He is the owner and operator of Exclusive Arts Movement York and is a father of two sons. Please welcome Mr. Craig. I want to um, first congratulate everyone that spoke, all the young people that spoke. And I'm going to ask you guys, like, how did you feel about them speaking? Like, So, a question, like how would you feel if they left here today and they were murdered in the street? How would you feel about that? Like, would you be angry? Would you be upset? What would you want to do? Hopeless, right? That's how black people feel every day. Every day, with, the, with not having the ability to know what's going to happen when the kids leave the house, when their brothers leave the house, when their dad, when their mom leaves the house. Every day, this is something that we deal with. So if you are happy that these young people spoke and you feel so glad to shout and scream and hold signs and be out here, I need you to be consistent about it. I need you to be consistent, 365. 366, consistent. But I need you to know that everybody's option is not the same. Everyone's avenue is not the same. If your niche is one thing, do that. You don't have to be what everyone else is. You don't have to protest every day. You can do whatever it is you need to do. This policy is just pushing, pushing the envelope in your job, making sure that people know that black people's voices need to be heard. Do that. Do something if it's monetary push money towards funds, but be consistent through this, through this roller coaster. Like hop off the roller coaster of emotions and be consistent. Again, I want to say you guys did an amazing job. Yeah. Yes, thank you. I got two sons and everything I do is for them. Every time you see me out here, every time you hear me speak, do something, pushes positive propaganda, it's for them. But it's also for every other kid that I see around this city and around this state and around this country. We gotta get these kids the beacon of light that they can succeed in a country that has shown them that they can't succeed. I just want you guys to continue being consistent. Again, I wanna get that through to you guys, be consistent. Be consistent, be consistent. Black Lives Matter. While organizing, I wanted to make sure that black lives were at the front. I wanted to make sure that their lives and that their voices were the ones that were going to be heard because right now it's about black lives. All right, and for now, I would like to introduce someone so special to me. Her name is Alicia Bartley. Alicia is a part of the Temple of Grace Ministries and supports her community in the aspects of performing arts. Please give a warm welcome to Lacey. I would just like to sing a song of encouragement for you all today. We shall overcome. 
we shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, down in my heart, I do believe that we shall overcome someday oh we shall overcome we shall overcome we shall That we shall overcome someday. I love you all. Thank you. She just sang some very important words. We are going to overcome yes. together. Yes. What will we do? Overcome. What do we do? Overcome. What will we do? Overcome. How? Together. Yeah. Together we are stronger. Yeah. And now to close off, I would like to introduce Carla Christopher. <laughs> Carla is a reverend. She is York City's former poet laureate and a community-based pastor, as well as a professional diversity and equity trainer. Carla believes in the power of brave storytelling to build relationships that change hearts. She believes that justice for our neighbors is what love your neighbor looks like. When you look like it, please welcome Carla Christopher. Yes, Lord. People have asked me, why is it that you all are continuing to gather in this kind of a rally, in this kind of gathering? Haven't you all been doing this since Martin Luther King and he died for it? Haven't you been doing it since Malcolm X and he died for it? Haven't you been doing it since Rodney King and so many people died for that? Haven't you been doing this since Trayvon Martin, and I tell them yes, and yes, and yes, and we will keep doing it until not one more black life is lost in these streets. There is no acceptable loss of life. There is no acceptable collateral damage to racism. And if you are here in this beautiful, big crowd, you are unfortunately a victim of racism. And I don't care what color you are, but what I am is proud that my white and my Asian and my Latinx siblings have all come to this space because they recognize that this is indeed, as my brother said earlier, a people problem. Lesson. If you went to school and your teachers did not tell you about the evils of redlining and the evils of the three-fifths compromise and the evils of how our government sold out reconstruction after the Civil War, you are a victim of racism. Yes? 
No matter your skin color, you were deprived the beauty and the power of black American knowledge. If you did not read, if you did not see the plays, if you did not hear the music of wonderful and powerful and creative African descent people, as well as our other black and brown siblings, if you didn't hear that music, if you didn't see that theater, if you didn't grow up doing those plays on your stage in school, you are a victim of racism. If you have turned on the television and the only healthy, functional family you can still remember that looks like you is the daggone Cosby's, you are a victim of racism. If you have looked at your leaders and your role models and your inspirations and you are a black or a brown young person and you have struggled to find someone who is doing what you dream of doing, you are a victim of racism. Your vision of possibility has been taken from you. But we got a new kind of young people today, in case y'all didn't notice. And when they did not have the adequate role models that they deserved, when they didn't have the opportunity to vote, the way that we do with our age privilege. When they didn't have the resources in their schools, they said we're done sitting and waiting for somebody to bring this to us. We want justice now. There are mentors and there are supporters behind this gathering because that is our responsibility. We owe that to our youth. But this rally was dreamed up it was executed, it was vision, it was logistics, it was social media, it was publicized, the speakers were recruited, the logistics were run, this was all done by people under the age of 18 who our country doesn't even let them vote. Don't you ever tell me their lives don't matter. We are gathered here today because we will not be victims anymore. Racism has torn apart and destroyed our country and it has created the false illusion that we are separate. This is York. Look around you. Look at the spaces, the different ages, the beautiful hair beads, the wonderful signs, the colorful masks. Look at the beautiful, beautiful tie-dye. Look at the hats, the music. This is your city. This is your family. This crowd is your family. We are somebody's cousin anyway. That's why our LGBTQ siblings in Pride Month are saying, Pride is canceled, but guess what? We're going to put that Pride energy towards Black Lives Matter. That's why our white siblings said we still gonna do all our fireworks late at night, but a bunch of our holidays were canceled. It's our summer vacation, but you know what? We gonna put our summer vacation off because guess what? Our neighbors are in pain and Black Lives Matter. That's why certain individuals whose name I will not dignify with the glory of this mic are still on a national level from the White House going after our immigrant siblings and they are still struggling and fighting on that front, but they said we're gonna fight on two fronts because Black Lives Matter. So I congratulate every person today because you all made the decision by coming here today to move from a victim of racism to a survivor of justice. You are a survivor for justice. Let me hear you say that I am a survivor. I fight for justice. I fight for, justice. I fight for freedom. I fight for, freedom. I fight for liberation. I fight because of love. I love my black siblings. I love my black family. Black lives matter.
Now I'm about to get off this stage. But before I go, I would like us to do something special for our young people. So old heads like me, those that have reached auntie status and uncle status, I'm gonna need y'all to do this for me, carry this weight for me. I don't care what your religion is, your spiritual background. Atheists, I'm gonna need you to send up vibrations. My pagans, I'm gonna need you to bring your energy. I need you to channel some earth right now. My Jews, Jewish friends, I'm gonna need you to bring, bring some God energy into this. But for the Christians in the crowd, we just celebrated the season called Pentecost. Pentecost is where Jesus said, I did my work. I'm going home, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to leave with you. I'm going to put the God right up inside you. I'm going to light that fire in your spirit and your soul. And I'm going to have you carry that with you, in your heart, in your soul, inside you, because God is within you, because you are beautifully, perfectly, and designed by Jesus made. And so you are a perfect creature of God. Whatever God you follow, whatever religion, wherever you stand, you are perfectly and wonderfully made, just exactly as you were meant to be. You have the gifts that you need, you have the strength that you need, you have the talents that you need to change this world. And so what I'm going to ask all my people of every faith today is that we're going to pray a blessing on our young people. God of our lives, spirit of this earth, forces of nature, of planets that move with power and purpose. You order the steps of our young people. May they walk in blessing. May they walk in grace. May they walk in safety. Spirits of racism, we condemn you. Spirits of injustice, we cast you out. Devils of inequality, we send you right back to hell. Spirit of love, we invoke you over our children. Spirit of protection, we cast your net over our families. Spirit of justice, you are what love looks like when it's lived out loud. And we recognize that we carry you inside us, each one, as a sacred charge. So families... This is our gathering point. This is our beginning. We have to vote. So spirit be with us as we vote. Spirit be with us as we make phone calls and as we write letters to legislators. Spirit be with us as we lay heavy hand on our government, on our police department, our school district, our stores, and our local legislators to insist that they continue to lift up that which empowers black and brown people. Give us strength, give us courage, give us patience and peace, and give us power. The power that only comes from this kind of crowd together. Let us remember that we are never, ever alone. In the name of to whomever you pray, let it be said, Amen. 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 Ashe. Amen. So be it. Black Lives Matter. Thank you, Paula, for blessing us, for blessing us, for praying for our children for praying for our future. I would like to welcome William Johnson. William Johnson is 20 years old and is a spoken word artist and writer. Please give a warm welcome to William. Is this what it means to be black in America? To fear the ones that were meant to serve and protect. It seems black lives don't matter in the face of those who have the ability to nail on our necks. See, we knelt to bring awareness, 
you knelt to oppress. We raise our fists and say don't shoot. You raise your guns to our chest. How many times do we have to die before there is change? If this is America, why are we treated it? Why aren't we treated as people in the land of the free and the home of the brave? Instead, we get bullet wounds, reminded of what we couldn't do, and all that was left is pain. We tried protesting peacefully, yet it did more harm than good. We scream Black Lives Matter, yet people are still contemplating if they should. Being black means excellent. I'm gonna say that one more time. Being black means excellent, but having a dark complexion must. Being black means excellence, but having a dark complexion must mean he's up to no good. Rest in peace to Trayvon Martin, who died February 26 in 2012 for putting up his hood. And once again we riot, screaming black lives matter because that's what people are dying. You say all lives matter, and while that's true, you used it to prove once again that my people should be silenced. We live in one country with two systems, and you wonder why my people get violent. And to my black community, Martin Luther King once changed the world with peaceful protests without burning anything. Yeah. So blessed be the peacemaker. Yeah. So blessed be the peacemaker. So blessed be the peacemaker who fought against segregation. And to the people who forgot what that peaceful demonstration ended with, he was the victim of assassination. It's funny because we get one month to celebrate the black history. A month that was filled with culture and a month that was filled with culture and how much we actually changed this world we know. Yet we are still enslaved by the chains we can't seem to break that started hundreds of years ago. Yeah. Malcolm X said it best. If you're not careful, the newspaper will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are being oppressed. Oh. Malcolm X said it best. If you're not careful, the newspaper will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing. Being black automatically puts you in a position to die, and that's what my people are expressing. We have died for this country, both as a curse and a blessing. Yet one fights for this country's safety, and the other one fights for his life, and that's just what's upsetting. Officers and onlookers watch as he spoke his last words, and all we have left is a video that is virally spreading. Don't you understand that even if it doesn't affect you, not saying anything is what is silently deadly. They all heard crying and begging. Ignore why he was bleeding and sweating. I can't breathe! I can't breathe! The words he spoke is that he was the weapon. As we scream Black Lives Matter, how many more of us have to die until you learn the message? Black Lives Matter. Rest in peace to George Floyd. And just like that, my people will rise. Let's go! This is what community looks like. I'm so grateful to stand with all of you. And this relates to what Will said. During this time, many have cited MLK as an inspiration for peaceful protesting. But the very man who we quote today was assassinated for his beliefs, no matter how peaceful they were. He was vigilant and fed off of the discomfort of others because it inspired change. But where is MLK? Where is his cited counterpart, Malcolm X? Our black leadership has been killed off. Yeah. We have no one to envelop us in love and support, and that's why we need a new generation of leaders, and you can be it. Yeah. Our system is not broken. Our system is designed to do exactly what has been carried out in the past decades. Yeah. Yeah. 
Black youth, you have inherited this system. We have inherited this system. Do not underestimate the power you have. Don't forget that the battle is economic too. Put your support in black businesses and let them flourish. Be considerate with every move you make and every dollar you spend. Be consistent. No matter what methods you use, understand who it affects. And as, and as grateful as I am for the peaceful protesting, do not demonize the attempts of the riots. Do not let the anger you experience from the riots distract you from the cause of them. The gruesome death of George Floyd. Because eventually the riots, they'll subside, but his life will never be given back. His daughters will never see their father again. Honor, honor the victim through your actions and remember the power we have. If black students hadn't sat in the Woolworths lunch counter in Greensboro, would any of us be allowed in this space together? It's been a long time since a vast amount of people have grouped together in solidarity. We've lost jobs. And now the world is watching the chaos in our country. They're watching us go up in flames. This should be the first gathering of many. Do something that works in a different way. If filmmaking is your art form, use it to grasp the core of this issue in a beautiful film. Choose your outlet, whether it be poetry or dance, and pursue this topic from various means of expression. Don't tell me you can't do anything. The energy we have cultivated within this space must follow you home. And I say this to our allies, if you post and share this issue on social media, show up to the protests. But are quiet behind closed doors when everyone opposes this movement? Are you still on our side? Are you still on our side if you're silent when we're not there? And I'll leave you with these questions. How many times will this happen before black people can just be people who do regular things? Like jogging, like being a 12 year old boy who plays with toys, or wearing hoodies stuffed with candy in their pockets. How many more of us will it take? How many more bodies littered on the streets? Thank you. So what do we do now? So what can you do? All right, y'all, I'm gonna need you to get your phones out. Put this in your calendar. I'm gonna give you a minute. Join the YWCA on Thursday, June 4th at 8 p.m. for a virtual candlelight vigil dedicated to George Floyd. This virtual, this virtual vigil will include a reflection time hold space for people of color who may be grieving, and give us the opportunity to take many deep breaths, long breaths together to honor his final words. Please, I can't breathe. There will be a chance to offer a donation to George Floyd's family. Please check the YWCA Facebook page for more information. Another thing I will offer to you is research Black Lives Matter petitions and please sign them. Be proactive, use your voice. And again, if you can vote, use that vote. Thank you for coming out tonight and offering some of your time. I never imagined that this would be the outcome well, how are you doing over there? How about over there? And over here? And back there, I see you! It's been real. The support that I have received has been so overwhelming. This is the community that I recognize. This is the community that I love. This would not have been possible without you all here today. And please, to all my black brothers and sisters, I want you to leave knowing that your voice has been heard. 
I want you to know that you are loved. I love you. You are so cared for. Your dream matters. Your future matters. Your life matters. I care for you. Remember that York cannot remain complacent and we cannot stay neutral because when you're neutral, you're on the side of the oppressor. I pray that hope has been ignited within all of you and I want you to crave justice. So for now, we're going to end this with some chanting. Please do not move down that street like some members did previously. Please stay here and I hope you can feel each other's energy. And start making a change. Start making a change. It doesn't stop here. We're 17 years old. We're just best friends who decided that we wanted to do something. Or let's just say, hey, look, I'm devastated by this death. Let's do something. I said, hell yeah, let's piggyback on this. Let's do something. And now we're here with hundreds of people. So let's go.
democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. This is what America looks like. This is what America looks like. This is what unity looks like. This is what unity looks like. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No racist police. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No racist police. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No racist police.